Hello, everyone. So, uh, my talk is uh, actually in the spirit of uh, previous talk by Arnak Bogosian on this topic, and the, in the spirit of, of the title of our workshop, Data-Driven Systems, Intelligent and Data-Driven Systems. So, I will try to share more uh, experiences and challenges while uh, dealing with, uh, with the intelligent management of cloud environments and cloud applications, especially focusing on key performance uh, indicators, diagnostics for those environments. Uh, this is a joint work somehow also with uh, Duisburg Ensign University, Professor Han Fing, and my VMware colleagues and uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, students. Okay. So, uh, what is the main vision in this space? Uh, we actually want to develop uh, healthcare for cloud environments. So, from di diagnostics to remediation to fixing problems and resolving uh, business issues, okay? So ultimate goal can be uh, actually formulated like uh, s building self-driving data centers. If you, uh, why not? Because you have self-driving cars today or near future. So uh, why not have a vision to build uh, self-driving data centers? So everything managed by AI, without human uh, intervention, intelligently diagnosed, uh, remediated, etc. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we are far away from that uh, reality, and we will, uh, we will talk about more specific problems that we are dealing uh, with in this space, and uh, challenges, difficulties that exist in this domain, okay? So, uh, it's a common truth that uh, behind any modern business is a cloud environment, a data center that uh, the, biz the business can be serviced somehow to users, right? So, uh, in this era of uh, digitalization, everything needs to be converted to a uh, actually digital uh, a reality. That means that it uh, should be somehow reside in any application, any, any service need to be reside uh, in a uh, cloud data center. So, keeping healthy of those data centers means that we keep healthy those businesses. That's very simple. But uh, how to actually maintain uh, performance of those uh, systems, cloud environments and applications? The actually approach is a very straightforward today and tomorrow uh, monitor measure any any data possibly from those environments to have visibility into those environments and try to get insights from the monitoring data but normally you end up with this situation with the guy Arnak also mentioned about that. You have a lot of data, a lot of different representations, many, many dashboards to, to uh, actually support the visibility you want, but uh, ultimately uh, getting lost in, uh, in, uh, in the volume of information. So that's why this is a necessary but not sufficient actually approach today uh, to reliably manage cloud computing environments 
in view of their complexity, sophistication, and the uh, scale we, we see uh, in those systems. That's why also we talk about, sorry, uh, I think I did something wrong. Okay, so just an example, uh, intermediate example, that what does it mean to, to have also uh, some specific analytics developed for monitoring data, like time series. You can measure millions of this, uh, this, this type of metrics from your cloud environment in terms of its uh, uh, different parameters like CPUs, memories, cache, etc. And you need to actually investigate each metric in terms of its typical baseline behavior and react uh, to the anomalies uh, which are about deviations from those baselines. So then in order to combine all, uh, all the information coming from that anomaly space becomes another, another issue to handle with another layer of analytics, another layer of AI. So just an example how uh, people approach today to, to solve specific problems in, uh, in, in cloud management using ML, but, uh, but uh, needing to, to always put extra layer in order to get the, uh, the uh, final desired state, which is about automatically uh, performing uh, health status check and uh, fix of the, uh, of the issues occurring in the data centers. As I said, uh, anomaly detection is a core AI operations task, so we don't have these self-driving data centers yet, but we have uh, the era of AI operations where you solve different particular specific problems to address the main actually management issues in, uh, in, the, in the cloud or in an application you monitor. Change detection, very important uh, task, which means that if, if, if something has occurred unexpectedly, then you need to somehow react to that one. So it can be a statistical approach, it can be an ML approach, etc. So forecasting any time series metric is a core problem. So you, you want to get uh, actually uh, you want to know what, what, what will happen soon in order to to have time to uh, actually uh, react accordingly. Any kind of predictions about the future state of, of your system is very important. So these are specific tasks to, to resolve in terms of different data source, uh, like Arnak mentioned, metrics, logs, traces, it can be more, okay? But these are only uh, modular, particular solutions. One uh, substantial problem is whatever you monitor, whatever you measure, whatever you do in terms of an, uh, anomaly detection, etc. People need uh, root cause analysis automatically. It means whatever insights you have learned using ML from your environment, please give me a recommendation how to resolve the problem. What are the core actually events to look at? What are the core parameters or what are core processes I need to deal with in order to uh, actually bring the health of the system into the normal situation, into the normal state, right? Uh, this is a large actually problem and uh, open problem, I guess, in general. Uh, for these systems, but a particular actually scenario uh, we have considered is um, key performance indicators analytics. So whenever some degradation of KPI happens in an application, how to actually diagnose the situation and try to explain it. So uh, discover the conditions that explain the KPI uh, degradation, okay, as a particular AI, AI operations task. 
Uh, I have to mention about uh, several factors that hindering some design of effective uh, root cause analytics in this space. Normally, we don't have expert validated, labeled, annotated data sets that we can leverage in our studies in order to build effective models that can be deployed everywhere and like uh, solve uh, diagnostics problems of uh, applications, okay, or cloud environments, cloud infrastructures, so uh, different layers of the, uh, of the main problem. And uh, it is not generalized uh, knowledge from one environment from the other, okay? And sometimes if you have a uh, lot of data and you can uh, leverage like uh, very sophisticated models like deep learning, explainability is a problem because you need to explain uh, actually your recommendations in order to uh, to build confidence at the user that those recommendations can be taken because those recommendations are going to change the data center uh, actually status, change the business, uh, so, uh, impact somehow uh, the, the service that can, be, uh, that can be under risk based on, in view of your recommended actions, right? So it should be explainable in order experts get uh, the trust and uh, actually uh, permit to to intervene the system with your uh, recommendations. So uh, with the uh, so any system, any environment, any application, any infrastructure uh, normally managed with some uh, KPI metrics. These are time series, actually. Uh, metrics which actually uh, enlarge responsible for the status of the uh, of the system with uh, having uh, reliable diagnosti diagnostics uh, in terms of KPIs we can have uh, actually uh, two use cases that we address troubleshooting recommendation engine uh, if you have a, a solution deployed uh, different user environments, you can leverage it to diagnose, uh, troubleshoot uh, uh, the environment it resides in. Or we can, as a provider of cloud management solutions, we can have a proactive support of our uh, software at the customer environment. So, because we, we produce software in order to solve the problems by others, but our software, which are also com complex somehow systems, need to, to be diagnosed as well. So support is, uh, again, uh, is subject to human efforts, support teams, etc. Uh, high volume of manual work we want to get rid of. So it means that uh, having somehow uh, behaviors of our KP, uh, uh, product KPIs in real time, we can diagnose uh, the conditions that are responsible for uh, uh, the KPI behaviors which are unwanted and fix, uh, fix the uh, product problems in the customer environments in real time. Okay, so two, two use cases that we are interested in. That's it? No, no, no. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it didn't went. Uh, it didn't go well. So, sorry, sorry. So, it was a technical problem. Okay, so. Uh, as I mentioned, Label data set, which can be actually leveraged for training classification models, role induction systems, are not available and hard to obtain. One actually approach that we 
adopted is about a kind of self-supervised uh, learning, which means that we actually generate labels using KPI behavior um, artificially. So we say that let's, we are unhappy, let's assume that we are unhappy with outlying behaviors of our KPI metric. That can be a source of label to actually attach that to, to the whole time series space that we monitor. So to, to the, if, if we have another 1,000 metrics measured from the same system, so this outlying behavior, this kind of positive class, can be attached to the corresponding uh, actually vector of values coming from the, uh, this time series data and a story in, in our data frame. If your KPI is in normal state, like defined uh, somehow, then uh, you have a negative plus actually label for your data set, the same 1000 metrics, okay? There is a, actually a fundamental assumption in this process because since nobody tells us that this behavior, outlying behavior, is really uh, anomalous in reality, we assume that taking this way and building co the corresponding model based on the the data frame construction I mentioned, we can actually get uh, enough good solution to the diagnostics problem uh, related to this KPI whenever we, uh, we encounter a real problem in, in customer environment, meaning that if you have, if, if these outlying behaviors are good approximation or of what will happen in reality, then you have approximated good, uh, well approximated conditions, what will be the recommendations that you will produce in, uh, in reality, okay? So maybe there is a bias in this uh, assumption, but this is, the situa this is the reality that we actually uh, are facing in terms of uh, lack of annotated data sets. Then, if we do this tra trick, uh, we naturally rely on uh, some rule induction, explainability methods, like decision trees or, or uh, rule induction algorithms, also leveraging uh, regression analytics and uh, importance of uh, features, which actually explain the long-term behavior of uh, of particular metrics which highly impacting the behavior of, of, of the KPI, okay, which is important to, uh, uh, we are interested to, 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 to know the, what actually uh, dimensions of uh, explainability, global and local. So we want to know globally what are the most important actually processes that impact on the KPI, and whenever some anomaly situation happens with KPI, we want to diagnose that instance. So who are responsible for uh, this anomalous instance of, uh, at the KPI? Okay, uh, just a uh, experimental use case with uh, the product uh, support, which I mentioned. The product that we deployed the customer environment is a uh, multi-node software solution that measures the data from the cloud environment, but we need to keep its health uh, uh, in a green state in order to continue our service of the, uh, managing the underlying cloud environment. So it has some self monitoring metrics we, which are about its, uh, its performance uh, actually behavior. And 
try to leverage those metrics to build a model which can be uh, can be a model for customer support. So diagnosing our product, the customer environment, uh, trying to get the conditions that are necessary to uh, bring back the health of uh, our product uh, in, in in those environments. So. Uh, Example is about 18 days of data with 15 million observations. 3,000 time series uh, features are uh, uh, measured for that period of time. And we just pick up an important metric for experts which can be a cross node latency uh, like a super KPI, we, which is important, how, how fast the nodes are interacting in order to, uh, in order to uh, be satisfied with the, with the performance of our product and the customer environment. Okay? So, um, I already mentioned this trick of labeling outlying behaviors, which, which is actually in our experiments about Three, five, seven, or ten percent of uh, higher quantiles that can be actually separated from the uh, from the time series data and claimed as positive class labels, uh, we, which are attached to the to the rest of uh, uh, three thousand metrics, and we experiment with different KPIs, like uh, mentioned uh, here node latency, average of, uh, average of cross nodes, or max of, uh, maximum of maximum of those cross, uh, uh, cross node uh, communications. But also another metric, which another KPI, which is about uh, its analytics, actually service, which computes uh, the baseline bounds of all time series uh, data in the system. So it's a, a, a large overhead in the product to wake up every like 24 hours and compute whatever is typical, try to derive whatever is typical for all time series data in the system. Okay, so then uh, I will not go into the details. We have a lot of insights, a lot of experimental, uh, actually, uh, results in terms of importance of metrics, which are globally interesting, uh, interpretations of different uh, situations. But uh, what is important here, we, if we train neural network, like... Uh, multi-layer perceptron on, on this data set I have mentioned. Uh, it gives 96% of accuracy, but it is not usable uh, according to our actually plan, which should have enough level of explainability to, to talk to uh, users or customers, okay? So, you see the result based on the raw data set, which was not good. And the two things actually we learned uh, in these experiments is that undersampling actually really helps in overcoming the uh, noise and also feature ranking. We have 3,000 different features, but we realized that only uh, a small uh, number of features are really helpful in diagnosing the KPI and the information theoretic actually feature selection method called FCBF was really helpful in uh, 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 reaching the results in uh, those last two tables and getting uh, a good accuracy level for CN2 rule induction method. Arnak was talking about Reaper in these experiments. We used another information theory based uh, inducer, which is CN2, uh, working with uh, noise well. 
and uh, we continue to actually extract rules from CN2 and try to speak to our experts in term, uh, for, for the validating uh, results. Okay, so uh, PCA didn't work in this experiment. On the sampling, 35 to 65 uh, actually proportion uh, worked well, and feature ranking, as I mentioned, FCBF was the uh, uh, actually uh, most uh, helpful trick uh, in this study. I attached some specific examples from CN2, which, which are rules explaining outlying behavior of this over -threshold check, uh, overall threshold checking maximum duration with quality measures and distribution of, uh, of, of the rule. Okay, we see high quality rules uh, which says, and there are rather complex actually rules, not simple, which say that, for instance, if resource symptom region update average duration is larger than specific uh, threshold and some system attribute health is larger than this, then you have uh, you have anomalous uh, KPI status. And then you see more complex rule with different conditions on different actually features, which explain again the outlying behavior of the, of the KPI, uh, which is interesting because nobody actually owns such a knowledge, right? So explaining a, a specific situation with different uh, conditions combined and specific values uh, attached to, to, to each line of condition. Okay, another examples of high quality uh, rules which you can see that they relate to different actually features, uh, features in the in the study, like capacity reclamation, something, uh, and uh, resource metadata, which were not present in, uh, in the previous examples. Okay, another set of uh, uh, rules. Here we see that Cassandra DB is starting to play a role in explaining this uh, process of uh, threshold checking. Okay. Uh, more examples for uh, latency KPI. Again, complex rules with high quality and dealing with different features, heap size, like uh, some transmitted uh, bytes, uh, actually volume, etc., which nobody of us as data scientists understand how, why. So, uh, so the expert validation is really important uh, for uh, those rules. And for that purpose, actually, we initiated uh, simple initial validation of discovered rules with our engineering team uh, with uh, some interesting fragments. So, so generally they know what, from their, their long-term experience working with the support and with the product, generally they know what are important metrics. But they, they are surprised with the combination of different important metrics into conditions that can uh, tell uh, what is the problem, right? But they uh, overall liked the rules discovered with some eye-opening and surprising factors, as I said. But rigorous validation means something more like to, to uh, try this, this model uh, in different environments make massive uh, tests in terms of uh, how those rules really exactly pointed out the problem, the underlying problem, and trying different like metrics to measure the performance 
of, of, of this model, like mean time to repair rate. So how fast you ac actually repaired your uh, uh, issue using the rules, okay? These are to be done for an extensive and rigorous validation uh, of this global model. And of course, it, it's also a hypothesis whether global or local models will work. Whether we can train one global model for our product, which is deployed in uh, many thousands customer environments, and it will work uh, still globally, like for everyone. Or every local environment is uh, so specific that needs to be uh, trained, uh, the model need, uh, needs to be trained uh, separately, okay? Uh, but this with this study actually uh, we learned several things that uh, KPI uh, degradations can be, can be explained with this self-supervised trick, like generating artificial labels somehow and uh, trying to explain behaviors which cannot be really uh, uh, associated with real, uh, uh, actually, degradations in the customer environments, but there are some approximations of those. Uh, those models can be enough capable. So, hypothesis somehow works at this, uh, at this stage. And uh, what is interesting also that this can be uh, used to actually proactively quantify the risk of the, of the misbehavior at the customer environment of the product uh, while leveraging the, uh, the rules that we have, uh, we have uh, discovered. So with conditions that are uh, satisfied in the rules, we can actually quantify the level, the level of uh, uh, the risk that is going to uh, that is going to bring to, to full satisfaction of the rule, which means you will get uh, anomalous uh, situation for sure, right? If one condition is fulfilled then you have maybe one-fourth of the, of the risk, right? Two, 50% of the, of the risk, etc. So it can be proactively notified the uh, customer or our support that something is going to be wrong soon, okay? So uh, these are the main lessons learned and uh, this summarizes my talk. talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. So maybe I have missed that part. Uh, could you please name the algorithm that helped you to generate these rules? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I talked about CN2. Mm -hmm. We have tried different algorithms, decision trees, but you see uh, I mentioned here CN2 rule inducer, which produces the rules that uh, you see on these slides, this is an information theory based uh, rule inducer. You can check the literature, which is uh, very interesting. Okay. Yeah, and you can find it in the tool called Orange. It's a visual programming tool. I didn't find any implementation in Python libraries, etc. So you can find it in Orange only. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, the specific numbers that you got in those rules, um, do they need to be retrained for every system um, that you're trying to uh, run your KPI uh, diagnostics on? I think the uh, hypothesis is that if our product, we have different versions of the product, like three, uh, three node, small size, uh, version of the product, six node, uh, I don't know, 12 or 18 nodes, so different sizes of the product. Uh, so uh, uh, naturally it takes a different volume of workloads from the cloud. And okay. I guess that each 
uh, one of them needs to, to have its own uh, model. So this, this was about six node installation, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, means that uh, that's, an, uh, that's something to, to test whether it can work like uh, equally reliably for the uh, like 12 node deployment. Okay. I, uh, I, I, I'm not optimistic about that, so it's okay. so different scales of monitoring data, different uh, workload levels, etc. So the, uh, it will be hard to actually generalize, I guess. Okay, um, does that uh, rule inducer only um, induce the numbers that you see on the right hand side or also the actual attributes that lead to, for example, KPA degradations? Uh, reduces, uh, sorry, again. So do you need to um, specify the attributes yourself, or does the ruling do uh, you can You can say that uh, I'm interested in rules uh, with participating conditions not more than five, for instance. You can okay. say, uh, you can specify how complex you want uh, conditions mm -hmm. to be, nothing else. So it automatically defines what are the best, actually, oh, okay. quality rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Just very briefly, you mentioned that we need a bigger study. Yeah. How do you plan to get there? Do you, do, do you put that in contracts with your customers? And are they willing to participate? or? Well, it, uh, actually, it, in this uh, product support use case, it's not really about contracting with the customers, but with our support teams that <laughs> actually support different customers in different regions. So it should be some internal contract, which is harder to get, maybe, than <laughs> with the customers. Okay. okay, so that's yeah, challenging. Another challenge that I, uh, I wanted to emphasize. No questions? Thank you. Oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, real time is uh, two things actually. Uh, one is that we can deliver uh, the rule uh, real time because we have already uh, pre trained model deployed at the environment. So we see that if uh, KPI is in an anomaly state, then whatever rules are satisfied now, so quickly. Uh, taking the, uh, from the list the, cor uh, the uh, corresponding actually blocks to be recommended real time because nobody has uh, now that so everything is manual if something is wrong then they take a, a telephone call to support him say hey my KPI is wrong so then maybe it, it will take days or week to discover what happened to the system. So real-time means that I have a real-time recommendation in terms of specific rule. And I already see that it is satisfied in the system. That's why I am confident that it should explain the KPI behavior, right, at this moment. The second is that it can be real-time and proactive, as I mentioned, because I can measure always, track the satisfaction of these rule conditions and return a risk factor, so whether something will uh, happen to KPI soon or not. Sorry? Uh, risk calculation, I think it's very straightforward. Like the, uh, the, uh, like the two conditions you see on the first... No, abnormal, if, if you have already uh, uh, analytics that can detect K, what is KPI anomaly, or user can specify, say, l latency like uh, below this or higher this, I, I will not accept, right? So you know the thresholds. 
Okay? Then it is easy. You check the threshold, you get whether the KPI is anomaly or not. But who is responsible for that? You have one million of different metrics who can be responsible for that anomaly. So checking threshold is easy. Checking uh, rules already uh, discovered and stored in the system, straightforward, linear operation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you.